Uh, welcome back now to our discussion segment. With its universal usability, many Nigerians have adopted unstructured supplementary service data, USSD services. Bank customers have saved themselves from long bank queues by typing short codes on their phones to carry out some of their financial transactions. USSD code has opened the door for many Nigerians to utilize financial services, improving the adoption of e-payment systems and financial inclusion generally. But the progress made so far is currently threatened by an age-long dispute between the telecoms firms and the banks. I am now being joined by the former president of the Private Telecoms and Communication Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Texan, Comrade Oladakbo Moses. Thank you for joining me, Osmosis. Yeah, thank you, and good morning, Nigerians and the viewers all over the world. Thank you for having me. Yeah, good morning to you, comrade. Now, since 2019, banks and telcos have been at loggerheads over who should pay for USSD services and how the payment should be made. Uh, this has led uh, to many threats of uh, discontinuation and a whole lot of that. But generally, how should it really be done? Well, uh, th thank you very much, our viewers, and uh, Justin. Thank you, and uh, again, thank you for having me. Uh, USSSD code, uh, you know, 9 out of 10 mobile transactions in Sub-Saharan Africa flow through the USSD code. And uh, though presently it is an old technology uh, spanning over 20 years globally for the technological advanced countries, but uh, in Africa it is just uh, gaining momentum here. So that makes it a bit difficult to actually compare the international best practices with Nigeria mm. or Africa. But however, we still must discuss uh, this. Now, two things that we uh, work with are comparison is number one, the number of bankable, the bankable size, the percentage of bankable size in advanced country, they have a larger size than our own. Then number two, the technology involved, they are more advanced technologically. If you look at the volume that has been done in the last uh, quarter of this year, you will see that uh, there are a lot of failed or unresolved transactions till now that people are still worried about. But because of the advancement and those two factors I've talked about, uh, the best practices that are perf uh, done now in those advanced countries is that subscribers actually subscribe, users subscribe to those uh, USSID services. Uh, for example, you can have a 24-hour subscription. So, uh, you can have a, a weekly subscription or an annual subscription. So immediately a user uh, uh, agreed to be on the USSID service. You make your choice of weekly, daily, or uh, yearly, then you pay. Then after that is done, your transaction throughout the year, you will not pay again if it's annual. If it's monthly, the same thing. If it's 24 hours, the same thing. So uh, that is what has been, is being done in advanced country now because it has gone so commercial. And uh, presently, uh, uh, in Nigeria, I believe we will get there as time goes on. Right. But uh, I just hope that hidden charges mm. will not be the problem with our own here. Thank you. All right, uh, Osmosis, uh, telecoms operators, uh, they have disclosed that 90% of traffic on USSD was driven by financial transactions carried out by bank customers in the country. Well, specifically, I get charged um, uh, 6 dollars or fee for most of the transactions that I do by my banks. But why is this same amount not being remitted? I don't understand. Well, uh, it is, this has been a recurring issue for some years now, if not almost up to almost a decade or so. And it's a, uh, it is a, an issue of a pot calling care to black. Mm. Bank want to make money at the mercy of the telcos, making nothing. Now, in one of the previous meetings by the CBN, the NCC, and the, uh, and the rest, you know, NCC was also of the view that the services should be suspended, the payments, the charges should be suspended. That was the NCC's view. And they were backed by CBN, who said that USID is a sunk cost, meaning that there is no additional cost on the infrastructure of the telecoms to provide USID service. You know, when they start saying that there is infrastructure, there is nothing like physical infrastructure at this point, it has to be some uh, uh, some some software uh, or handshake infrastructure, not physical infrastructure. So mm -hmm. the CBN saying that it's a sunk cost gave the banks 
the morale or the courage to believe that they are not supposed to pay those money. And the way our nation run presently is so funny because CBN had an agreement with the bank, with the telcos, that you should pay. The banks refuse to pay. CBN has done. Except CBN will come on after some times and then bring them to the table and say that we advise you to pay. And this is becoming so funny. Because now the banks have made the money from the customers. Why not pay the money? So it's, it's, it's just a funny scenario in this, in the, in this country. But the, the issue is so germane that if the telcos doesn't provide those infrastructures, mm. those services, that telecoms, bank cannot have that service. So why not have an agreement and pay? It's like, but, uh, the customers have already paid. So it's, it's just a funny rhetoric in, 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 uh, between the CBN and the banks. All right, uh, comrade. Um, so I hear that there is a meeting. Uh, this is not the first of several meetings that have been held concerning this issue. But Alton, Atcon, uh, CBN, and of course um, other stakeholders are meeting today. What's the worst that can really happen? Because already there have been some glitches in the system. Have telcos stopped uh, expanding the USSD infrastructure so far? Well. Uh, if telcos will stop expanding their infrastructure, it's going to be a, a loose lose to them. Because, like I said earlier, uh, by the time this thing becomes more commercial, uh, the telcos may have to go on their own separately, but they will still need the infrastructure of the, of the banks, the bank accounts, the bank cards, the bank authentication services, and the rest. So they can't stop expanding infrastructure. So, and then uh, the worst that can happen, it, it, it happened sometimes back, I, I think I've forgotten the year now, MTN was suspended by some banks when they started, uh, when they when they increased, uh, reduced the commission on the MTN uh, services for using the uh, USSD. So the worst that can happen is the government coming with a split. That's okay. Now let us stop the bank from collecting the charges. Let the charges go directly from the subscriber to the telecoms. So that's the worst. Both of them need this business because they're very cool money. You know, a, a business, you don't need a staff to do any extra thing. Then you've done the coding, you've done the, you've configured the routers, the machine, then automatically it can work like that for as long as possible. So it's a loose-loose if the telcos stop, and it's a loose for the bank if the telcos doesn't support them. So I think Nigerians should be less worried. It's a fight between the two elephants that cannot destroy the grass. All right. Uh, okay, let me just reel out some statistics right now. Mobile transactions increased by 505.29% in the first quarter of this year alone, as individuals used it uh, 671.93 million times. What do we have in our hands? Because if you ask me, it's, it's as though Nigerians have actually decided to just go full-blown to USSD. What do we have in our hands if these things are uh, just left to just uh, uh, kill off just like that? Well, uh, the the high jump uh, the first quarter of this year is as a result of the emergency or on planned cashless policy. Mm. You know, it affected almost everybody. In fact, I myself I was almost uh, duped <laughs> via my USSD. Wow. I had to deactivate it till date. You know, and uh, you know, uh, it's it was necessity of compromise. People are not they have no choice. That's where that surge came up. So because uh, it's, it's funny that people are still not convenient. Many people are not comfortable with all the USAID and online transactions because unlike when you have cash, you can spend 5,000 naira without getting charged. Mm. But with the USAID and the online banking, you can't even spend 2,000 naira without the charges. So uh, uh, at the end of the day, I believe that uh, though it's, it's a good service because uh, it is a good design, but our banks need to come up more fair, fairly to the users. It's not uh, everything you have to put in charges and then so but I, I, I believe if you look at the next uh, next uh, quarter that's from after the election March to June you will see a drastic drop because people are now preferring to go back to their banks because of all resolve issues and a lot of things. So it's, it's a it's a it's a cool design where you know both of them the bank and the telcos don't need to have a good agreement because uh it is it's, it's a good design for the businesses for them to make a very powerful profit. So that, that, that is it. All right, uh, Comrade. Uh, but with all of this play now, with the dispute between the telcos and the bank and other stakeholders, what's the impact of all of this on the federal government's financial inclusion drive? 
Okay, uh, let, let me quickly make reference to some countries. Uh, countries like India, Kenya, Bangladesh, South Africa, recently have been cutting costs, cutting down on the fees, charges paid on their USSD. For example, uh, India, presently, I think they're on $0.007. Dollars. Uh, Kenya is on 0 0.01. Bangladesh is 0 0.01. And uh, South Africa is 0 0.014, you know, dollar. And the reason, and Nigeria presently, uh, what we paid presently is like 0 0.017, higher than other countries that I've mentioned, according to the uh, Bill and Melinda, uh, Melinda Gate uh, report. Now, what this does is that the, if the government really wants to include the people, the government needs to take a true decision on two things, either financial gain or inclusiveness of the people. If you are looking at inclusiveness, we need to drop down this price. Since Naira 98 cover is huge. For example, a lot of people don't want to embrace it at all now. So why, why not bring it down to as low as one Naira? Now, it's, it's just a, a form of mathematics. You have one million people doing the service for six naira, 98 cobble. Now, if you take to one naira, what about having one, uh, 580 million people coming up on the service? It makes more money. A lot of people that don't want to be included in the banking cover will come on. Just like India now. Is that 80% of Indian adults have bank accounts just because of some things, you know, they reduce in the USID, there's some fintech and there's some additional technology uh, upgrade in India. So I believe the government needs to take a drastic decision. In order you want to include the masses, you want them to come up on banking, or you want to make gains for our banking sectors All right. and the telcos. So it's a very decision for the government to make now. But the government needs to be sincere. Okay. Yeah. Finally, as we uh, let you go now, Osmosis, uh, this is another development now. Five years after the NCC shared a report on uniform short codes, stakeholders in the telecoms industry will now begin implementation. What's the main argument for this harmonization? Yeah, the HSC, that's a harmonized short code, uh, is a welcome development. Uh, for example, I think Ghana implemented theirs long, long back before this. And... Uh, because one, it will assist us in the ease of memorizing. You know, most times when uh, you need to do some services, is either you have to go to get uh, the details or uh, you ask your friends. So using a, an harmonized short code is better so that you just will have one. So it's ease of access. But the, the uh, main argument about it still come back to our uh, infrastructure on telecoms. Because uh, now we are going to be having a single point of entry. Everybody goes through the same way. So, and, you know, when you go through a single point of entry, there is possibility of a single point of failure. Now, this has been happening already. If you look at our uh, POS services, at times, uh, before now, when the POS uh, is, is down, either via the NIBS, mm. uh, that's the Nigerian Bank Settlement System, before you can have one machine, one uh, one service provider's POS go down, another one is working. But in the last two three years now, you see that when a service go down, every other services are down. So that is the same fear, the same things we have with this HSC code, harmonized short code. That means if one service, for example, if three hundred is for customer service and it is down, then nobody can reach any customer service. You can't reach Glow, right. you can't reach MT, you can't reach Salad, you can't reach anything. All right, thank you so much, uh, Moses. We have been speaking with him, Comrade Oladakbo Moses. He is the former national president of the Private Telecoms and Communication Senior Staff Association of Nigeria, Texan. Thanks for your input on the show this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you, and have a nice day. Yeah, you too. Thank you. As we round off now, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, has threatened to penalize shipping companies exporting undocumented cargoes from the country. Now, CBN Governor Godwin Emefile spoke at the RT200 Non-Oil Export Summit 2023 on Tuesday in Abuja. Now, the summit is themed RT200 Challenges and Prospect. Emefile said the development of the non-oil export sector is crucial given that it holds vast potential for generating a significant amount of foreign exchange earnings. Beaming some searchlights on undocumented exports. And we had advised the shipping lines at that meeting that 
we will also be monitoring and if we find that they, they, they export cargoes without documentation, that we will penalize them, including um, placing their accounts on PND, post no debit. And I'm sure we all know what post no debit means. We have so far not done anything like that, just because we feel that our shipping lines will be responsible to do what is right. But if we do not see the kind of cooperation that we we'll expect, I'd have to insist that we will do what we need to do. For any export to a warehouse established outside India, for instance, with the permission of the Reserve Bank of India, export proceeds can be repatriated within 15 months from the date of shipment. Many countries of the world have, have, have these requirements to ensure effective export repatriation back to their countries. Ladies and gentlemen, we will agree that the challenges facing our country today are many and evolving. These challenges require the macroeconomic policy actions that are inclined towards a market-based financing system. Some of these innovative ideas could spring from deep, deep system thinking and power. All right, that was um, the, uh, the president of um, the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, Godwin um, Emifile, the governor rather of the CBN, Godwin Emifile, talking about shipping and, of course, how undocumented um, you know, companies uh, would actually be penalized if they don't do the due process. But that's the size of the show for today. I am Justin Akadonye. Business Insight returns again tomorrow. Let's do it again. Bye for now. <laughs>